Welcome back to my next video on the Hexbeam installation. So, what um, this this video is going to show us a little bit about the uh, preparation of the Hexbeam uh, to get the Hexbeam up. Now, my Hexbeam was purchased second hand. Um, the previous owner uh, did not follow the instructions uh, to paint all the fiberglass poles. So I had to follow up on that, go after fiberglass poles of light sand, and, uh, and it was certainly necessary. Uh, after the UV exposure to the fiberglass, uh, the fiberglass has, come, has become a little bit rough on the outside, and you'd run your finger across, and uh, that would, uh, wouldn't be very nice. You get little fibers <coughs> stuck in, in your skin. Um, so UV destroys fiberglass. Fiberglass is not UV proof. Uh, fiberglass needs to be painted in order to uh, be exposed to the elements um, in order to survive UV exposure. So that was the first job. Um, I went and painted all the poles. You can see the painted poles um, in the picture here. That's uh, number one and that's a very important job for the longevity. Now <clears throat> the next part was um, when you see the end of the poles here, you can see they are deformed. They are not exactly round, and this is after they have been installed for a couple of years. So there's a reason for that. The clamps on the center hub, and you can see it in this photo particularly, uh, the one on the right-hand side, you can see <clears throat> how that has been compressed. And that compression occurs because of the clamps on the hub. Um, when the poles are clamped down on the hub, uh, you just have to do up those clamps, those U-bolts a little bit uh, too hard uh, and those clamps, um, those uh, fiberglass poles um, will deform and the fiberglass will actually crack. So the first job was uh, to try and do something about that. So uh, with a little bit of uh, metal work um, I got onto the lathe and, uh, and uh, made a bit of a job out of that. So you can see here um, we've got a uh, bit of um, 20, uh, 20 mil stock, I think it was, um, <clears throat> um, or something like that. Um, a bit of steel, and um, we used the lathe to uh, turn that down, and um, we we'll leave a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a lip on the end. Um, here's the parting off process, where we are actually um, um, parting it. And uh, of course, I had to make uh, six of those because we got uh, six poles. So there's a, a total of six pins. Uh, here you can see the six pins all uh, made ready. You notice the lip, the dimensions, uh, they're about 19 millimeters in diameter and uh, pretty much 100 millimeters long. Um, and here they are inserted into the end of the poles. That's, uh, that's how it works. So the first test assembly is uh, on the ground, of course, uh, to make it easy, and uh, that's just the um, uh, just the arms um, all tied into the centre. Um, and uh, once that is done, um, I've installed the twenty meter wire just uh, so I could test one band um, and uh, put it up on a bit of a, a slight elevation in the backyard and um, ran a. Uh, um, a feed line into the shack uh, for a little test and uh, I was able to uh, contact the station uh, with that setup so I knew everything was working and the antenna was ready to be installed up on the roof. So of course everything had to be disassembled because it's uh, the antenna is too big, the hex beam is way too big to be uh, carried around through uh, driveways and things. Um, so let's get to it and um, let's do the final assembly before it uh, goes up into its final position. So we start off uh, with the hub assembly. Um, the hub assembly um, gets uh, um, supported and uh, we've got it here supported um, in a position where it's ready to go up on the roof. You can see in the background, you can see the rotator up on the roof. Uh, the arms are all plugged in and there's actually a, a feed line uh, connected. Um, uh, it's only a short piece but enough to go into the roof. So the first job um, is of course to uh, tie them all up and bring all of the uh, all of the arms into the center. You can see how that is done here, what they look like. And uh, the next job is um, 
um, putting some cable ties on, you might ask why. Uh, they are for birds, uh, to prevent birds uh, from sitting on it. Birds love antennas. Uh, so about every four inches uh, we put some cable ties and uh, those cable ties get in the way of the birds when the birds are, are trying to uh, sit on the antenna and roost. Uh, we've had that problem uh, with birds on the other antennas and we've had to take various measures but uh, the cable ties certainly seem to do the job. Uh, the birds don't like the cable ties. Next is the installation of the wires. So we start on the inner one, innermost wire and that's the uh, six meter one and we work our way towards the outer wires until we've got all the wires in uh, with the 20 meter wire being the, um, the one on the outside. So now the antenna is ready um, for a quick test which uh, we've conducted to make sure the SWR is okay and uh, we can now take the antenna and um, put it up on the roof. Now, getting the antenna up on the roof is uh, not such an easy task, and as you can see, it requires uh, multiple people. I've had uh, numerous helpers here. Uh, firstly, to get it um, just up to the edge of the roof, and then uh, to move it a little bit further up. And uh, once the antenna is uh, sitting up there near where it is, we will put the last uh, pole in underneath, and then um, we'll get it and uh, lift it up high and... Uh, fit it into the rotator, make sure the adjustment is correct and um, uh, the rotator, when the rotator is pointing to the north, the uh, antenna is pointing to the north as well. And uh, there we go, that's the antenna up and installed. And uh, as you can see in this picture, we've got quite a good, um, uh, quite a good takeoff uh, for the antenna. And, uh, and here it is, um, all the way up there. So there we go, that was um, uh, the installation of the antenna, but um, we've got uh, I've got another video coming um, about uh, building a customized controller for it. So until then, thank you for watching.